Thank you, Lord. One thing that I've enjoyed over the years as being a Christian is <clears throat> being able to witness and share my faith with people. And I've done that from the very beginning. So we want to talk about uh, witnessing tonight. And these are principles for effective end-time witnessing. I don't know about you, but I believe we are in the end time. In fact, we've been in the end time for the last 2,000 years as you read the word. But we're at the end, end time, at the very end of the end time. So let's start off reading that, and we want to talk about how to win people to Christ and, and stir our hearts that uh, if we're not doing this, pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us, and, and, and let's do it, you know? So let's read this. One of the main purposes of this teaching is to restore to us the awareness that now is the time, like never before, we must seize every opportunity to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ effectively and not to just be waiting for the Lord to rapture the church. One of the keys to effectiveness is preparation. So we have to prepare ourselves. Every Christian should know how to win someone to Christ. Suppose you were on the highway and this car had this accident and this man was thrown out of the car and... Uh, and there's nobody around but you and him, and he's in the bushes, and you run up to him, and you know he's dying, and uh, what would you do? Well, if you know he's dying, I hope the very first thing you need to say, do you know the Lord? Are you a Christian? And if he said, no, I'm not, would you know how to win him to Jesus right there as he is dying? And this is what this is all about tonight. We want to make sure that every one of us as Christians know how to share the gospel with someone that they can receive Christ and be saved. Witnessing, as we move along on our, our um, piece of paper here, our handout, witnessing and soul winning definition. The branch of Christian service where believers allow the Holy Spirit to use them to tell others about God's plan of salvation through the gospel. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be checking some scriptures out in just a little bit, but let's read on a little bit further here. Purpose for witnessing. To bring glory to God, we see the scriptures, that uh, number B, that we walk in obedience to the Great Commission. I know a lot of people go to church, but they never seem to pick up the responsibility that uh, I'm a member of this body, and I am to function in this body and, and uh, give, help give life to it. So all of us are a part of the one body of Christ, and we all have different functions uh, in the body. And each part is to give the other part what it needs to survive. We're like ligaments of our body. And we're, when we're connected to one another, then we are able to strengthen one another. And as we go out from this place, we are to touch the world for Christ and to witness. Uh, just yesterday, I went to the, see my doctor, I'm a heart doctor and everything, and I checked out okay, that's what he said anyway. And, uh, but the, uh, the woman, the secretary was there, and I, and I said, Boy, she, I mean, Christ was just really aiding out of her. And I said, you know the Lord, don't you, as your personal Savior. And boy, when I told her that, she lit up bigger. She said, yes, I do. And I said, I can tell because I can discern your spirit, and you have the spirit of Christ, and it's really aiding out of you. Oh, that made her day, you know. So you can encourage Christians as you move along in your life also. Benefits, uh, let's move on to C, to deliver lost souls from eternal death. And we see the scriptures there, but let's move on a little bit and we'll cover this, then we're going to go into the scriptures. The benefits of end time witnessing. We are abiding in the building of the kingdom of God, or we are aiding, I'm sorry, in the building of the kingdom of God. The works of the devil are destroyed. The believer's rewards, and there's many rewards, a sign of God's wisdom. He that winneth souls is wise. 
Everybody say that. He that winneth souls is wise. Now, this may scare you. And I remember when I first started out, and I was pretty brave uh, in sharing Christ with people and uh, talking <clears throat> with them. But there was times I, I had a certain amount of fear. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but I experienced that fear uh, to witness, and I realized it was the devil trying to stop me from witnessing. So uh, I thank God that I broke through that and, and have always been, been a witness, witnessing and sharing Christ with others. All right, here's some barriers to witnessing, and I guarantee that many of us can uh, identify with this. Fear. Fear is the lack of faith. We know that. Look at all the scriptures on that. Discouragement. You can be discouraged due to what seems to have been past failures. Uh, the uh, the radical, uh, racial barriers, little or no communication with other races, uh, the social standing of the person who needs the Lord, selfishness, you know, uh, can keep us from witnessing, the social standing of the person who needs the Lord, or I said that, all right, qualifications for an effective witness, the assurance of your personal salvation experience yourself, you know that you're saved, you know when you were saved, you know the Lord, and you should be able uh, to not only share the scriptures with people, how to get saved, but you should be able to share your own personal testimony when you gave your life to the Lord. Now you need to think that through, and uh, maybe you need to stand before the mirror and practice it, you know. So remember that, that that's important. Um, the second experience known as the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives people power to witness. All right, the baptism of the Holy Spirit brings to us the desire to witness. Be refilled. This was the key to the success of the early church. Boldness. Well, the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Here's a key to boldness in, in, in righteousness. Uh, the love of God as our motivation. Able to recognize door openers for you to witness. Subjects such as the church, ministers, death, sickness, hell, the devil, God, world, all kind of different stuff. So the world is out there and God has saved us and we are his ambassadors and we are to witness. Now, the first scripture we want to turn to, and I want to turn to Matthew 13. Uh, let's start with verse 18, and then we'll go right on and read this uh, parable that Jesus gave us. Jesus is speaking in Matthew 13, verse 18. It's on the board. There we go. Now, Jesus is speaking. He says, listen, listen then to the meaning of the parable of the sower. Now, we could go ahead and start from the very beginning, but he's given the interpretation, so we're moving right into the interpretation of the parable of the sower. While anyone is hearing the word of the kingdom and does not grasp or comprehend it, the evil one comes, that is Satan, and snatches away what was sown in his heart. And he said, this is what was sown along the roadside. So, you know, we have to guard our heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. But we get the word of God in our heart, the devil can come along and steal it. Jesus says he's come to kill, to steal, and destroy. And so we have to guard our heart. It's amazing. I talk with Susan sometimes, and... Uh, Sometimes we'll, we'll begin to read the word and, you know, we start coughing. What are we coughing for? You know, the enemy tries to stop us from reading the word. I don't know if you ever experienced that or not, but you open the pages of the word of God and it's like you want to, something wants to push you away from it. This word is so powerful. So you really have to discipline yourself and say, devil, I'm going to read this word <laughs> and, and, and get into it and read it. So we see that, Many times you will witness, and you will sow the word. You're the sower, you sow the word. Some sow, some water, but God gives the increase. Always remember, you can't save anybody. 
The Lord's already done that at Calvary. Your job is to pass the message on and let them know how they can get saved by receiving Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father except through him. There is no salvation in any other person other than Jesus Christ. So as a soul winner, you've got to know that. Now, boy, the excuses you will get. You will get so many excuses. You go to somebody and say, uh, do you know the Lord? And they'll say, my dad and mom were good Baptists. <laughs> That's not what I asked you. <laughs> How many have ever done that? You talk with people, you know. Uh, my grandmother was a, my grandfather was a preacher. Wonderful. That's great. <laughs> but do you know the Lord? And they'll try to change the subject, see. And then you can say something like, did you know Christ died on that cross for you, for you, and, and he bore all your sins on his own body for you. And if you would repent of your sins and, and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. And if you do die, you can go to heaven. Now, that's a pretty good deal. So you can, you can spark it off just like that, okay? And, and then they say, well, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't think I, I'm good enough. Oh, boy. You'll meet a lot of people that will feel like they're not good enough. Uh, on and on and on and on, you will see excuses. Never let that bother you. That is just the way uh, it is with people. When you But see, you'll get wiser in doing that. You'll get stronger because you'll learn. You'll learn of the many, many um, excuses that they will give. But you know, when they stand at the judgment seat of Christ, not the judgment seat of Christ. If they're not a Christian, they won't stand there. They'll stand at the great white throne judgment. That ain't going to hold up. Okay? So never get mad at anybody. You know, never tell, you know, we used to, back in uh, years ago, we used to kid people that if they didn't accept the Lord, we'd hit them in the head with the Bible. Don't do that, you know? Uh, I'm just kidding. But uh, some people, you know, they get mean if you don't, if you don't, uh, yield and accept Jesus. They want to fight with Just relax in the thing. You're an ambassador. Your job is to share the message. Let them know how they can be saved. Let them know they need to be saved. And then uh, and love that individual. And I think what makes a good soul winner is someone that loves people. And uh, you love people and you reach out to them. So, so let's move on with this uh, parable now. So we see that uh, the enemy snatches away the word out of their hearts. Look at verse 20. And, then, and as, for, as for what was sown on the thin rocky soil, this is he who hears the word and at once welcomes and accepts it with joy. Yet it has no real root in him, but his temporary inconsistent lasts but a little while, and when affliction or trouble or persecution comes on account of the word, at once he is caused to stumble, he is repelled and begins to distrust and desert him whom he ought to trust and obey, and he falls away. How many people I have met might, they might stay Christians for three years, four years, five years, maybe even seven years, and some trouble comes. Uh, and the minute some trouble comes, they, they just get all worked up and uh, just it disturbs them so bad that they just walk away and, 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 and just don't want no more to do with it. And so I've met people, I've met people like that. I met people and I told, well, you know, they, I was once a Christian, but, you know, this person in church did something, and I tell you, I lost my faith because of it, and you got to make your mind, and you're going to walk with God. Don't let nobody, nobody discourage you. I don't care what they do or what they don't do. You hold fast to your confession, but you will witness to people and, uh, and you'll see them come to the Lord, and for a while they're doing real good. And some little something will disturb them. 
and they'll just fall away. So you have those type of people uh, uh, along the way as you, as you walk with the Lord. Look at verse 22. And, is, and for what was sown among thorns, it, this is he who hears the word. Now catch this. But the cares of the world. But the cares of the world. Every time I, I, I read that, I think of the message that Willie preached about cares. Notice this. And the pleasures and delight and glamour and deceitfulness of riches choke and suffocate the word and it yields no fruit. The world, the flesh, and the devil is our enemy. God wants us to have a good time. But you know, seriously, this is why I've seen people, they miss one Sunday, they miss the next Sunday, then you might see them, then they miss another Sunday, and, you, and I'm thinking, Lord, is the, is the cares of the world, is the pleasure, the glamour, because there's a lot of things out there in this world really, our flesh really goes, would go after. Is that not true? Huh? I mean, big time. Let's be honest. So look at the care, cares. That's why Jesus said, cast all your cares upon me for he cares for you. So cares, you have to learn to cast upon the Lord. The glamour of the world. Oh, there's so much out there that looks so glamorous. There are certain things on TV that I will not look at. Now, this is where I'm at. You have to testify to me where you're at, okay? But, but as your pastor, there are things that, because, and I have looked at it. I mean, it took a little while for me to get here, okay? <laughs> Hello, are you out there? You know, but what am I looking at that for? That's carnal. That, that's the world. That's carnal. That's not spiritual. That's not edifying God. Now, some, some people might not understand that. But when you, when you come to that place where you cherish your communion with God, you cherish your relationship with God so much that you don't want to do anything to bring displeasure to him. See? And so God will do that sanctifying work in you where certain things that you used to really like, but now you don't care nothing about it because you see it's nothing but carnal, it's sensual, it doesn't glorify God, and I don't want nothing to do with it. Now, how many in here understand what I'm talking about? Okay, how many don't understand? Okay, we've got understanding people in here tonight. <laughs> so I'm saying that, that, that to help you that you have to, uh, you have to watch that in your own life and watch out for the care, because, man, there's a lot to care about in this old world, especially when you've got three or four kids. And then you've got grandkids, great-grandkids. And I tell Susan, and I, and I watch Susan, and I say, Honey, cast all your cares upon Jesus, for he cares for you she says you're right honey thank you see you have to watch out for one another she says you're a shepherd i try to watch out and remind you you know there's a lot of scriptures in the bible talks about reminding people well i already know that pastor bob yeah i know you know that but i love you and i want to remind you what do we got up here you do this in remembrance of me why do we have one of the reasons we have communion? We can forget what the Lord has done for us. So when you have communion, you do it in remembrance of me, what I did for you at Calvary. Peter says, I, I know you know this, but I want to remind you. Paul says, I see it has skipped your mind. I want to remind you. You'll see that quite a bit in the scriptures. So some of the reasons that we come to church is to remind one another. So when you're dealing with people and you're really concerned for their souls, 
you have to know these things to help them uh, along in their Christian in their Christian walk. Now let's read this next one in verse 23. As for what was sown on good soil, this is he who hears the word and grasps and comprehends it. He, he indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case, a hundred times as much as was sown, in another sixty times as much, in another thirty. And so some of us have grown and we are established into faith and we're bearing fruit, some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. And so that's the person that hears the word, he grasps it and understands it. And then, then, then you can walk. I know the human element, because I'm human. <laughs> but you can get tired. Anybody ever got tired in here? Can I be honest? You can get, you can, sometimes you can be tired of coming to church. You wouldn't say that, would you, Bob? You know me. I'm honest. How many in here, let's take a little check in here. How many in here has really got tired of coming to church sometime? Let's see your hands. Okay, 100%. Don't feel bad about it. That's the human element in all of us. Man, my feet are hurting tonight. I sure would like to stay home. <laughs> but you grow through that. You, you, you learn to, to press on. Uh, there are just things that discourage us a lot of times. And so when you're working with people, and this is why you, we all help one another, we encourage one another. And uh, sometimes you'll have people in church that are really just plumb out. I've got to watch my words here. I'm a country boy, you know. I'm trying to find a real nice word here. Help me, Lord. Well, I'll just say plumb mean to you. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Anybody, how about at, at where you work? Does anybody in here have anybody just plumb mean to you at work? Let's see your hands. Yeah. Are you one of them? Good. I'm glad to hear that. But people will be mean to you, and that's why I put that scripture up there in 1 Peter chapter 3. Remember that? Verse 9, bless those who curse you, you'll inherit a blessing. So we live in a real world. How many of you know of those people in Boston, when that bomb went off, they're hurting. They are hurting. And the people that love them are hurting. So we have to, we have to be kind to people because we never know why are they acting and reacting the way they are doing? So when you begin to really get involved with people and become a soul winner, first be their friend. I want to say that again. First be their friend. Love, they, they may do all kind of stuff you disagree with, but love them as a person because God loved us while we were yet sinners. Remember that. And we haven't arrived yet either. So you've got to just love people. I cannot understand why when I first got saved, I just started witnessing. I mean, I exploded and I just started witnessing to people. And I've witnessed to, I, I know thousands of people in my lifetime. On the job, wherever I go. Now, here at the Shield, we have all kind of things that you can use. We have these up there, and on the back we have the, the, the plan of salvation on, on the back of this. About a month ago I gave everybody one, but uh, I saw we had a, the old telephone number on it, so I did away with that one and made some new ones. But we have here the, the plan of salvation on the back. We have the direction to the church, and uh, keep those handy. Uh, UPS man comes. Uh, somebody delivers a passage or knocks on your door or something, have something to give to them. Invite them to church. We have all these uh, CDs, DVDs back there. 
uh, I really encourage you that uh, every one of the, the men that uh, preached while I was gone, I listened to their message. I listened to check out their doctrine, to check out their, their spirit, uh, their mannerism, uh, everything they brought, and they did an excellent job. These uh, CDs and DVDs, you, you hear a message one time, you haven't really heard it. So I listen to, I listen to uh, messages all during the week. Now, the things I'm saying tonight, you may have to stop some things you're doing and stop and say, well, you know, I think I could uh, watch a CD or a DVD on your TV uh, a couple uh, of them a week. And get your little pad down and write down, write down things. Have your CDs in your car. Listening to the Word of God is so important on a daily basis. And that will keep you conscious of spiritual things. And, uh, when you, and, and in the morning when you, when you pray, pray, Lord, lead somebody across my path that I can share Christ with. That is my greatest uh, delight in sharing Christ with people. Uh, we have back there the Shield of Faith. We have our website now. And we've, we've got, I think, 3,500 people that have listened to the men and women in this assembly that's going out all over the world. Here we are tonight, and we are preaching to thousands of people now through the website. And uh, Mike Wolf has done a great job of setting that website up. Uh, we've got... Um, the faith walk is on there. You can hook onto that. I think the last two and a half years, all of the faith walk that Michelle Dodd has made out for us and everything is on our website, and you can hook onto that. We've got uh, Darren and Charity uh, D, uh, CD on that. You can listen to the music. So there's a lot on our website, and it's just not the men and women that are teaching and preaching. It's all of us. We are a team. We are a body of Christ. So whoever listens to a message out there in the world, every one of you here has a part in that, and one day you will get a reward for that, okay? So remember that. So ha have these ready and begin to alert people that uh, we have uh, a website and give out these little cards as you move along. And, of course, Susan just ordered, I think, four or five more thousand of these little uh, tracks here. And uh, so when we go to Hardy's, I always go to the bathroom, wash my hands, and leave a couple of those. Uh, on the table, I'll leave a couple. Wherever I go, I'll give these out uh, to people. I have them in my little uh, golf cart, and I see people walking out here. I introduce myself and talk with them and uh, ask them questions. And, you know, you just got to come right out and say, do you know the Lord? And I remember just the other day I gave one of these out, and I asked the guy, I said, do you know the Lord? He said, not like I should. That's what he told me. I said, well, we're all growing in that area, aren't we? And then I pressed on uh, with some other questions. So be brave, be courageous, share your faith with others, because... That's one of the reasons why God left us down here, to be able to be his witness. Now, when you read, I've been, in the last two Sundays, I preached on uh, the resurrection. And when you read the book of Acts, you'll see that over and over and over, how they preached the resurrection of Christ. Now, think about it. We're, talk, we're saying to somebody, we know this Jesus who was crucified and he died, and you know he lives today, and he rose from the dead. Well, now, go back 2,000 years, and those people thinking, rose from the dead, you mean he's alive right now? Well, even today, people don't know that. You think people know what you know, they don't hardly know hardly anything. I'm serious. But when you start witnessing and, and communicating with people and talking with people, you will be surprised. They do not know hardly anything about the Bible. 
Well, I know this verse, do unto others before they get a chance to do it unto you. Did I say that wrong? You know, just try that out on some people. I mean, I have a great time in witnessing the people. And they'll, they'll, they, you know, if they don't know, they, you know, and then I said, did I say that wrong, sir? So you can have a, don't, don't let fear grip you. Man, the best time in the world, if you start witnessing, you will grow, you will mature, you will find out a lot about people. But you just got to open your mouth and say, hey, do you know the Lord? Have you ever trusted Christ as your personal Savior? And don't worry what they say. No, I don't believe in God. Don't, it doesn't bother me. Don't let it bother you. Hello? Just don't let it bother you. Like God's going to fall off the throne. Oh, nobody believes in me. Uh. See, you've got to get rid of all those fears. They're going to say something to defend themselves, you know, because they, because you're putting them on the spot, and actually they're going to come up fighting, you know, because become uh, come to, uh, offensive to you. So make up your mind, Lord, help me to be a soul winner and to, and to spread the word of God. Now I want to share just uh, uh, some people here that, and, and I got about ten more minutes. I've shared this before, but I want to share it again because we have some that probably didn't hear it. But we had this woman named Rita. And uh, when, when the church was in the house, Rita came to our house, and she came to the service, and I was talking. And, and, and this happened to me when I was saved, too. But she came right up, walked right up, and, and I looked at her, and I said, can I help you? She said, yeah, I want to be saved. Now, let me tell you how God works. God works at both ends at the same time. If he's leading you to try to witness to somebody, the chances are he's been working with that individual, okay? You remember Peter and Cornelius' house? You remember Cornelius' house? 1 Corinthians? Is it 1 Corinthians? No. Acts chapter 10. How many, how many remember Cornelius' house? All right, the angel had dealt with Cornelius. He was a Roman uh, soldier. His whole family was saved, and God dealt with him, but God dealt with Peter and brought Peter to his house, and the whole house was saved. And so this is basically what happened to, 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 to Rita here because Rita had uh, a sister named Eulaine, so when Rita gave her life to the Lord, and I love the domino effect, she brought Elaine to the church, and she got saved. And we was able to win her to Christ. And then, of course, her husband really fought her. And, uh, but finally, see, once you start praying for people, the Holy Spirit will begin to work with them. And then he got saved. So now we're seeing the domino effect in the family. And then Rita had a brother named Junior. And she got Junior to come to church one day. And I'm up behind the pulpit and I'm preaching. And I look up and Rita is dragging Junior down the aisle. <laughs> and I said, Rita, it just don't work that way. <laughs> How many ever felt like you wanted to do that? <laughs> Get him by the leg, you know, and drag him down. I said, Rita, it won't work that way. It's <laughs> so she went back and sat down. He went back and sat down. I said, Junior, we love you. We're going to pray for you. You're going to get saved. Three weeks later, so help me, I was at my house. Somebody's knocking at the door. And Susan goes and uh, opens the door, and it's Junior. He's crying. He's crying. And she said, Bob, it's Junior. I said, well, tell him to come on in. So Junior comes in. He's a crying. The Holy Spirit was on him tremendously. And the minute I got in his presence, I started crying. And I said, well, what is it, Junior? He says, I want to get saved. I want to get saved. I said, okay. So I was trying to go the Roman route, you know. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, you know, if you'll repent. And, and. And he's crying, and I'm crying. 
And I said, Junior, just get on your knees and just say, Lord, save me. And we both hit our knees and he cried out, Lord, save me. And God saved him, just like that. You know, if God is on the person's case, they're going to get saved because it's done by the Spirit of God, okay? And so that, that was an exciting thing. So Junior gets saved. Next thing you know, his wife gets saved. They had six kids. They all got saved. And we saw a domino effect all the way down with that whole family. Elaine's husband got saved. Her kids got saved. I mean, it was just awesome over those, uh, I'd say, two to three years how God went through that whole family and, and, and saved that whole big family. So remember when you were uh, uh, sharing the gospel with one person, how many other people can be touched by that one person that you share Christ with, and they touch somebody, they touch somebody, and they touch somebody. And that's really the, the <coughs> discipleship way, is that you become a disciple, then you disciple somebody. You get saved, then you lead somebody to Christ. We had a guy out at the base named, um, oh, what was his name? Lajardo. I got it right here. Lajardo, I would witness out at the air base and I would share Christ. I'd share the Bible and everything. I never did press Lajardo to accept Christ. He had a Catholic background, but he was right there and he just listened to me share Christ with other men uh, where we worked out at the air base. And about a year later, I got a phone call at the house, and it was Lajardo. And he was all excited. He said, Mr. Tillman, I've accepted Jesus as my Savior. I said, Lajardo, that's great. And boy, he just shared what happened, and he was so excited about it and everything. I said, that is wonderful, and I rejoice with you. And, and then he hung up, and I thought, boy, that is great. I mean, I didn't personally present Christ for him to do it, but the Holy Spirit just did it. And that was a powerful lesson that I saw, sort of like the Apostle Paul. Boom, the Lord shows up, boom, the Apostle Paul is saved. So the next day I go to work, and he says, Mr. Tilton says, you know, I went home and told my wife she's Catholic, and I told her, that I accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. And he said, Catholics are all wrong. And boy, he shouldn't have said that. <laughs> don't, just don't go that way, okay? Just present Christ. She got the gun and was going to shoot him. He grabbed it. It went off in the ceiling. And, it went, and of course, the next day he's at work sharing this with me. Now, you know, when the Spirit of God is on you, when God gives you something, you're, you're bold. You're just bold. And I looked at him. I said, within a week, she'll be saved. He said, how do you know? I said, the Lord just told me. One week, she was saved. She gave her heart to the Lord. Well, she had a daughter, a teenage daughter, about 13 years old. And so they won her to the Lord. And, of course, they invited Susan to be over. They were, they were Mexicans. And uh, she fixed a real nice Mexican, you know, dinner uh, for Susan and me. We sat down and we rejoiced with them. We shared the word. We ate and everything. But he got discharged. Now, I'm showing you a domino effect here. He goes back to Texas. And he joins this Baptist church. And he gets a bus ministry. And what he does, he gets this bus, and he goes to his old neighborhood where, where all Catholic kids, picks them all up, takes them to the Baptist church, and they're getting saved just like that. Now, isn't that amazing? You witness to one person, and all these other people come in to the Lord. Now, that's powerful. Just think if you'd witnessed to somebody and they would become another Billy Graham or another Oral Roberts. So the main thing is that, that in your mind, start praying, God, I want to be someone that will share Christ with other, others. Now, 
This little book right here tells people how to get saved. You read it. Tells people how to be saved, what to do. Read it, learn it. Look in the mirror, practice it. Give out the DVDs. Give out these little, uh, on, on the internet. Begin to be a witness. We have all of these materials back there, these books. Somebody has a particular problem, find a book or something, give it to them. So learn, there's so many ways that we can witness. Now, this must have been, this must have been, hmm, gosh, how many years ago? He's, let's see, this, I think this is probably about 40 years ago. Susan and me were painting our front room on Middle Cliff Avenue. And the telephone rang. See, you never know, but be ready in season and out of season. So, so I'm painting. I got paint all over me. Susan answers the phone, and uh, it's her niece. And Tim is her son. And uh, she said, Tim is all just beside himself. I can't do nothing with him. Now, Tim has a muscle uh, ailment, okay, and he can't walk too good, okay, you know what I'm talking about, his muscles are really bad, but he just got beside himself, would you and, and uh, Uncle Bob come by and, and talk with him and pray with Tim, I, and so Susan passed the message on to me, and I said, sure, so we got most of, some of the paint off, we got in the car, and we're driving over to their house, see, walking in the spirit is that you can hear the spirit, and God spoke to me as we rode over there, and the Lord said, it's his time to be saved. So we went over there, and we uh, presented Christ to him. I shared the gospel with him. He accepted Christ. He calmed right down, just like that, and gave his life to Christ. Awesome. Tim's grandmother was talking to him about about a year ago, and Tim said, Grandma, and he's about 45 or 50 now, I, I can't, something like that, you know who won me to Christ? And uh, Grandma said, no, who? She said, it was Uncle Bobby and Aunt Susan. Now, he was 12 years old when we ex he accepted Christ. And all those years that he remembers that, that really strengthened our faith, you see. And so, Word will get back to you how God can use you for people to come to Christ. I went to the hospital years ago and visiting one of our people uh, that come to the shield. And as I was walking out the door, my eye caught this guy over here on the right. And I went over there and I began to talk with him. And then to make a long story short, I shared the gospel with him and everything. And he accepted Christ. He must have been about 25 years old. And I walk out, you know, and you say, God, you know, who's going to feed him? Who, who's who's going to lead him? Who's going to? But you see, when you accept Christ, Christ comes into the person's heart. To make a long story short, it must have been four years ago. This guy is sitting right over there. I preached the message that morning. And I walk over there and, and, uh, and begin to talk to him. He says, you don't remember me, do you? And I looked at him. I said, no, sir, I don't remember you. And he said, you're, you're the, I'm the one that you won to Christ in the hospital uh, so many years ago. And I've been walking with God ever since, and I serve him faithfully. Now, that's exciting to me. If nothing else ever happens in my life, just to know that, that my life touched one person, but my life has touched hundreds of people over the years, just like your life touches people. And what I want us to pray is that, that we'll become more aware of the Holy Spirit guiding us to touch people with the gospel. And it's a decision that we've got to make. But it will do so much for your faith to see people come to Christ and give their life to the Lord. Now, I would like to have one person to come up and uh, 
interact with me, and I want to I want to I want to win win you to Jesus. Who who would volunteer for that? Not everybody at one time. I need one person before I volunteer you. <laughs> you know we we're gonna you know like you're lost and I'm gonna win you to Christ. Okay. I got ten minutes, so I can wait. <laughs> the, 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 the camera's rolling. The camera's rolling. <laughs> Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Come on, Charles. Or do you want you want your grandfather to come up? Come on up. Come on. Either one of you can do it. Oh, father-in-law. Father-in-law. So you're supposed to bless me on that now. Bless me. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> All right, here's a gentleman I'm meeting on the street. And let's just say that the Lord's been dealing with you. And, uh, and you don't know what's going on, but you're ready to accept Christ. Okay. And I come up, and, and, and maybe I shake hands with you. Or let's just, my, my name is Bob Tilton. I'm glad to meet you. I just want to ask you a question. Uh, have you ever received Christ as your personal Savior? Not really. Huh? Not really. Not really? All right. Now, I could have said something else like, do you know the Lord? Have you ever, ever accepted Christ as your Savior? Or do you go to church or something? But I got right to the point. Do you know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you? Yes, he did, and he had you in mind, and every sin that you've ever committed and the sin that you inherited from Adam, he bore on his own body and died for you that you might have eternal life. And the Bible says, if I will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, you can be saved. You can receive the salvation that he's already provided for you if you'll do just what I, what I said. Would you feel like this is a time that you would like to do this? Well, I really haven't done very many good things. Well, it, it, we're not talking about, none of us have. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it's not so much what you've done or haven't done. It's what he has done. And he has provided salvation for you when he died on that cross. Would you like to receive him and receive eternal salvation? So you're saying he died for me? Yes, he died for you. Really? Would you like to be saved right now? If, if that's true, yeah. That's true. All right, say this after me. Right. Lord, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. But you died on the cross. But you died on the cross. And took my sins upon yourself. And took my sins upon yourself. And you said, and you said if I would confess you, as my, Lord and Savior, as my Lord and Savior, and believed in my heart, and believed in my heart that you raised him from the dead, that you raised him from the dead I, would be saved. I would be saved. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord for saving me. For saving me. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I receive you now I receive you as, now. My Lord and Savior. as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Now, the Bible says these things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life because you've received him who has eternal life, and that's Jesus Christ. So you are saved, and if you die right now, you'd go to heaven. Because the Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Welcome to the family of God. Because we're right out on the court. We're, right we're right in the middle of Walgreens, right? <laughs> Amen. You know, and, and, and that's it, you know. And, and, and it's simple. But, but you forget about other people. Listen. People... People are going to say or do, it doesn't matter what they say. It don't matter what they do. What matters is we are obedient to God. We are obedient to God. Do you need prayer, my sister? you need prayer? Do you need prayer? Are you okay? I, I know you were holding your stomach. You okay? Okay. See, I'm bold as a lion. <laughs> I scare some people sometimes. But you know, you just got to. Now, was that hard? 
Huh? Now, Charles, win me to the Lord. We got five minutes and we got to go. Come on up. Not, not your dad, but your father-in-law wants, wants you to win me. All right. I'm, just, I'm waiting on my bus. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Good, good. Hey, you don't watch TV? Do I watch TV? Yeah. Uh, sometimes I do. Uh, depends on if there's any goodies on TV or not. Did you see that series they had recently on the Bible? Uh, yeah, but I don't know if I believe that or not. Well, but wasn't it good, though? Well, I enjoyed it, well, especially when they was cutting each other up with those swords. Well, <laughs> that happened. <laughs> But do you know that one that died on that cross that got cut up with the sword actually did that for you? Is that right? Did it just for you. Wow. I if there was know. no one else in this world, he did it just for you. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. He loves you so much that he took himself and allowed himself to die wow. to do something for you. Wow. To save you. Wow. So you can have eternal life with him. Well, how could I have it? <laughs> It's real easy. Are you ready for that? I think I am. All right. Here's what you want to do. Jesus. Jesus. I believe. I believe. That you lived and died on this earth. That you lived and died on this earth. And that you came here specifically. And you came here specifically. To redeem man back to yourself. To redeem man back to yourself. And I accept. And I accept. This by faith. This by faith that I become a child of God. That I become a child of God by accepting you. By accepting you as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. I thank you for coming into my heart. I thank you for coming into my heart and allowing me to enjoy the rest of my life. And to allow me to enjoy the rest of my life with you. With you. Amen. Amen. Wow, and that's it. That's it. Oh, I feel different. You wow. should feel different. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Now, you know, that, that is simple, and yet the Holy Spirit honors that and does the saving. We can't save nobody. That's powerful, powerful. Now, husbands and wives, when you go home, one each other, practice on yourself. Find somebody you can, you know, you can practice, and just keep practicing, and then go out there and say, Lord, Lead somebody across my path. Now, you don't have to worry about anything. The Holy Spirit does the saving. Amen? Did you learn anything tonight just a little bit? I hope I challenged you now to be that witness. Amen? Father, we want to thank you now that we are your ambassadors, and we love one another, and we love people. You love them. You came to this earth. You died on that cross. That, and it is your will that no man perish but that all should come to repentance and come to you for salvation. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and have a good afternoon. And go home and win somebody to the Lord. Amen.